I need a bigger mallet. Much better. The head of this hammer is huge, measuring 280 millimeters long and 165 millimeters square. And I had these two pieces of 8x4 Oregon or Douglas fir that would be just enough for the blank when glued together. There were a few knots and defects I had to work around and I ended up gluing four pieces together for the blank. I wasn't concerned about how it would look all glued together because at this stage of the build, my intention was to paint the head silver or aluminium. But as you'll see, I changed my mind about that. I trimmed them up with the bandsaw first. And then milled them down further, first on the jointer and then on the table saw to get some nice clean pieces. Then it was time to glue up the blank for the head. I glued the blank together in stages with the two biggest pieces first and then filled in the gap later. Once the blank had dried, I trimmed it down on the bandsaw first. And then milled it square and to final size. First on the jointer and then the thicknesser. And if you've ever wondered what it looks like inside a thicknesser, I then trimmed the end square and to length so I could start cutting at the shape. The first cuts were eight bevels in total at both ends of the hammerhead. These were at about 25 degrees. Then it was the four 45 degree bevels along the length of the head. These smaller bevels finish off the shape and you can see I'd already cut them but they needed to be at more of an angle. The next step for the head was the eight embossed panels and I reached out to my friends at Laser Love Co and had the panels laser engraved as separate pieces that I could recess into the head. My original idea was to do them by hand with a Dremel, but I quickly canned that idea. To fit the embossed panels, I positioned them in place, traced them out, and then scored the shape with a sharp knife to get a clean line. I then set up this small piece here to keep my router base parallel with the face of the hammer and routed out the recesses freehand, trying to get as close to the line without going over. I cleaned up the edges with a chisel and did the same for all eight recesses and this actually worked out really well. Once they were done it was time to glue in the panels and give the hammer its signature detail.
There were just a couple of details left to add to the head to finish it off and I did them with the trim router and a straight edge. I didn't have anything round and the right size for the handle so I planed down this length of cedar. It's a real joy planing a timber like cedar. It behaves perfectly and smells nice too. For the rings to go around the handle I cut them from a PVC pipe. And to get the curved shape on the rings, I made a jig slash mold. I cut a hole in a piece of the same pipe I cut the rings from and then cut it apart to give me two halves. I then shaped them on the belt grinder until they fit together. The way the jig works is the lower part has a coupling pressed onto it to contain the ring while it's being shaped and a smaller pipe the same diameter as the handle is used so the rings maintain their diameter and once the ring is heated up to soft it's placed in the mould and the top part is pressed in to get the desired shape. This actually worked out really well, as you can see. I also made this piece that covers the joint between the handle and the head. And the end cap of the handle that holds the leather strap. There's another small piece to this that I made off camera because I basically forgot to film it. All the handle embellishments were then spray painted silver. To fit the handle I first cut a hole for the cover piece and then a smaller hole the same size as the handle. To clean out the timber left by the hole saw I just broke it out with a screwdriver. I then glued in the handle and left it to dry. The last piece for the head was the cap on top. But once everything had set, I finished it with clear poly. As I mentioned earlier, my first intention was to paint the head, but I ended up really liking the bare timber look. I just like that you can see what it's made of and how it's made. The faux leather material of this old bag we had was perfect for the handle strap. I cut it to size and glued it into the end cap of the handle. With everything dry, I could put all the handle details on and finish this thing.
I'm really stoked at how this turned out. It puts a huge smile on my face every time I see it, and I probably haven't felt that way about a project since the bike build. 